You should not have come, Emily. How do you know my name? Have we met? In a manner of speaking. As a manifestation of Yermi's deepest desires, I am to you unfamiliar. Yet I know of you. Are you Jeremy? Is that what you're saying? I am only his subconscious thoughts. I cannot speak for his totality. How come you have a Spanish accent? And what is this place? Is this Tarawea? This is indeed the fabled convent of Tarawea, where Jeremy goes to find peace during his sessions with Dr. Gray. It's all fantasy then. Based on the things he has read and seen. And that includes you? Yes. My name is Juan Luis Jorge. Yermi once read a book of mine. It stuck with him. Can you help me break the pact with the Dark Man so we can leave Dorsetto? Yermi doesn't want you to. He wants to honor his word to the Dark Man. Why? What's the point? I don't understand what the pact is for. The people of Dorsetto are calling upon evil to enter this world. Your uncle offered his soul to the Dark Man to contain this disaster. What? No, that doesn't make any sense. The pact will be fulfilled at dawn. As the sun rises, Yermi will forever be entombed in his sunken desert temple. As promised, the Dark Man shall quarantine and starve the evil inside their settle. What about all the patients and the staff? They will not stand the chance. That's unacceptable. How could Yermi agree to this? Desperation, of course. Yermi did not choose martyrdom lightly. Well, nothing is lost yet. I'm sure I can find a way to break the pact and save Jeremy, and hopefully the people at Dorsetto. What even is this evil you're talking about? I don't know much. I think some nightmarish entity from the bayou. I'll just have to deal with that later. First, I have to get Jeremy out of his deal. What? Did you run out of arguments? You're actually quite inspiring, Miss Emily. If we put Jeremy's feelings aside, I would have to say I agree with you. Really? You might just be able to save the old man from himself. I think you should take a look in the convent library. Try to find the truth about Yermi's relationship with the Dark Man. Okay. You should know that you won't be alone in those grand halls. The Dark Man has been reading those books for years. He's here? You'll have to be very careful. Of course. I... I can be careful. Good luck, Miss Emily. There's something missing. The great library was endless, beautiful, and terrible. An Akashic record for the universe. Inside the mind of Jeremy Hartwood, now corrupted by a story forced upon him, told by a maniacal liar, an evil conjured by science and secrecy. I will suspend a room and lock away the foundation of his character. Its key will be left to the librarian. The only thing invisible to the Prowler.
Oh no, it's... It's the Dark Man. It was in the hot autumn that I went through the night with the restless crowds. He was a kind of itinerant showman who held forth in public halls and aroused widespread fear. The New Orleans address of the event is lost, but I remember distinctly the Prext Shipping Company pressing their contribution. Emily! There is no going back. He's in my head, Juan. His breath replacing mine. 
You should not have come in. Well, if it isn't my new best friend. Come, join me for some giggle water. Ah, oh, Ruth? Oh, Miss Hartwood, don't tell me you've been out swinging without me. Ruth, what is this place? Where are we? Have you never been to the Maccabean before? Goodness me. Tell me, Miss Hartwood, have you ever considered going out for an evening? Are we in New Orleans? Oh, who can tell anymore? I just went inside the Grand Parlor and suddenly here I am. The Grand Parlor? Can I get back to Dorsetto from here? <laughs> Are you sure you want to? We could stay here and drink the night away. How about a gin fizz? If this is New Orleans, maybe I should go further. Find that magic show the book was talking about. But there was no address, just Preg's shipping company. Oh, is this about where Jeremy met the dark man? How do you know about that? <laughs> Jeremy talked a lot about the dark man. I always felt a bit envious. How so? If an all-powerful entity showed me any interest, I'd at least hear him out. I'm sure he has plenty to offer. I don't think you'd want that, Ruth. You're too sweet for such darkness. <laughs> oh, please. What kind of blue nose do you take me for? I relish the darkness. I think it suits me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't happen to know how to find the Preg's shipping company, do you? Of course. Their office is just over there. Whoa, what happened? You just got lucky. <laughs> A biento, Mamselle Emily. Hey, do you know where my uncle is? No, but I bet you're close. It was in the hot autumn that I went through the night with the restless crowds to witness the enigmatic black pharaoh. He was a kind of itinerant showman who held forth in public halls and aroused widespread fear wherever he performed. It was the sort of thrills my father sought out, especially if there was a promise of electrical trickery. The Norland's address of the event is lost, but I remember distinctly the Prext Shipping Company pressing their contribution in the morning papers. There were rumors of an Egyptian sarcophagus being a part of the act, something which kept me wondering how they had carried that up the seemingly endless stairs. The details of the showman's performance have almost been entirely replaced by dread the kind that numbs and hides the terror of something unbearable. What is certain is that ever since that night, I can't remember a single day passing without seeing or sensing the presence of a dark man. Preg's Shipping Company. According to the book in the Great Library, they assisted a showman performing somewhere in New Orleans. It's locked from the other side. to be another way inside.
all done. All right, I made it inside the warehouse. Now let's find that address. This is getting ridiculous. I mean, I'm not complaining. Our ship was raided while in dock. All of his things were recovered, but blood was shed. Several men were carried into the Mississippi River and drowned by ones who live in the deep. All items have now been signed and delivered. Now let's keep the paper safe. What is left? Later is right, and hell is back again. Work.
Cargo Manifesto, September 19th, 1892. Prague Shipping Company delivered four steamer trunks, one Egyptian sarcophagus, and a large wooden crate belonging to the showman called the Black Pharaoh, performing at Gaitin Street. This is it. The address to the theater where Jeremy first met the dark man. Looks like the fog cleared up. You shouldn't have come. Don't say that. You needed my help. All I wanted was to keep people away from Desetto. Especially you, Emily. You're the only one in the family who forgave me for choosing old age over death. Father still cares for you? He is paying for your treatment at Desetto. To get rid of me! That's the only reason anyone's at this chateau. Someone in the family thought you were becoming an embarrassment. Help me get you out of this mess, Jeremy. I want to take you away. Your father would send me right back. What if I take you up north, to Kingsport? I know Mother still has family up there. I've been thinking about going for a while now. <gasps> I haven't been to Massachusetts in years. I still paint from memory, you know. That old lighthouse makes for a great motif. Your father and I would go almost every summer. Then when our great uncle died, we stopped going back. What is there to be done about the dark man? He's the one holding you back, right? You feel like you can't leave without paying your debt to him. The dark man has been with me since I was 12 years old. He was standing right on that stage right over there. For a brief moment, his gaze held mine. And that was it. 
I recognized him for what he was. The heart would case embodied in flesh. I thought it was my turn, but I was only there to be mocked. Instead, his attention moved on to my father sitting next to me. I turned to him and saw his face. The whitest shade of pale I've ever seen. He bit off his tongue that night and suffocated. What can be done, Jeremy? Please. There's a way. Two ways, to be exact. One worse than the other. A written contract now buried inside his sunken temple. Don't you remember what it said? <gasps> I don't want to. Try, Jeremy. What did the contract say? No, we can't. We can't let New Orleans suffer that blight. I have to make this sacrifice. What are you talking about? Is this the thing from the bayou? Juan said something. Ah! Okay, so there is a way to break the pact, at least. Hidden somewhere inside the dark man's temple. I just need to find it, somehow.
I need to get down there somehow. The temple of Nefrenka lies under our camp. Despite all efforts, that unholy site did not collapse, but sink beneath the sand. The pharaoh is long dead, his name meticulously stricken from all ancient writing. But that stage meant for blood and terror remains. The temple is said to be lightless, built to harbor all the haunters of the dark found. In the very depths of our universe. Calling on the gods meant creating a bridge between our world and theirs. The terrible Aldebaran of Taurus, the Black Sun, was seen as the most important star in the night sky. Because, according to the Kitab al -Azif, it was said to be the home of that crawling chaos known as Nyalahotep. Through ancient mechanisms, it was said that the priests could open shafts channeling the light emitted by that strange stone called the Shining Trapezohedron. Several streams pulled together above the statue of that dark man would then be sent through space towards the Black Sun, a message to the gods. The gifts bestowed on the sender are completely undocumented, but often assumes to involve dark blood pacts, where souls are traded for malicious miracles. Okay, you can do this, Emily. of darkness. This is definitely where the contract is hidden, but how do I get to it?
Emily felt a wave of despair as she recognized...
to collapse. What's happening? Acknowledge psychological trauma. Break through the barriers of self-deceit, temper, manic behavior. Is this it? Is this the contract? Huh? Mm. Mm. 